Welcome everyone to another edition of Talking Swish. I know like our little jingle our teammate made us a while back. We decided to throw it into the show finally. Um, but yeah, Stephen, um, we got a nice little show planned today. We got some events coming up this week. Tell us a little bit about what we got going on. Well, uh, this past weekend we really didn't, uh, we kind of had a week off. There wasn't anything too, uh, too big going on this weekend. We finally got over our, our injuries from the from the uh, trip we took with uh, with our, our team captain, Dewey. Yeah, Dewey um, set us up for failure. Um, it's cool. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, he hates us. Yeah, um, Larry doesn't believe in sunscreen, so, you know, he's he's here peeling, and I'm I'm peeling as well as we both got burned like idiots, um, or as Larry would say, you know, like men. But um, um, regardless, uh, yeah, so we kind of had a week off, but uh, this week we're, we're looking at the historic... Um, open on Arena this weekend, and the first day is best of one, uh, and then the second day is uh, normal, historic, best of three. Yep, um, the first day is, uh, you go until you get your third loss, and then it's over. If you go and go 7-2 at least, um, you go ahead and make day two. Yep. Um, and then day two is um, once you get two losses, it's over. Yep. But if you do end up getting, I believe it's seven wins again, um, it's 2,000 for the first place, and then 1,000 for second for um like if you get six wins it's a thousand seven wins will get you two thousand then there's some like gem prizes and stuff yeah and if you make day two you usually got all your gems back um yep the gem total i believe from what i was told it's four thousand gems to enter to do it you can enter as many times as you want to try q but once yeah. you q you only get to do day two one time yeah. Which is about the equivalent of 25 bucks, right? 20, yeah. 25 bucks. Yeah. Yep, and then, or you can use 20,000 gold for those that have a lot of gold um, stockpiled. Yep. Maybe you'll do some of those little um, historic or standard challenge events that they have on there. You know, it's really cool. Um, it's a neat a neat thing we have access to, so that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward. Um, last time we did the arena open, um, we both made day two, and we failed to wake up. Yeah, we both... Uh, made day two and did not play day two, yeah. uh, which so, was pretty hilarious. If we play one game on day two, we have accomplished every goal that we've ever achieved. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, last time we both made day two, I feel like this time when we're actually ready for day two, we both might not make it. We'll yeah. see what happens. Like I told you, I'm not going to really stress too hard oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I might play once, maybe twice. After that, i probably call it good, yeah. move on, go My play limit will probably be games. three times. Yeah, so likewise. I don't really want to invest too much money into the no. tournament because like it's not like not a super importance to me it's right. a really cool tournament i hope they keep doing them yep. um i'm looking forward nonetheless but do we i do want to talk about um one of my favorite tournament org is organizer um is nerd rage gaming yep and they are actually going to be returning in august um for another legacy um um yep. open uh, what they're calling it for magic online open but the biggest part about it is it's they're not doing a Patreon no more. Wizards has actually loosened up the restrictions because of COVID yep. about using Magic Online for paid entry tournaments. Now their tournament, it's a it's $15, it's like 13 and then like a sub surcharge. Mm -hmm. So it's a $15 entry, but there's $1,500 in cash prizes to the top eight. Yeah. Do they not have a Patreon anymore? Is that just gone? Yeah, they're, they're disabling it. They just so they're not taking today. money from... Correct. Okay, that's nice. Yep, I saw that today. I just got the announcement. I looked through it. So you'll be paying through um, mtgmelee.com. Yeah. And we'll be going from there. And Legacy's awesome. They had a really good turnout for the last one. I'm looking forward to the next one. Oh, yeah. I'm sure our teammate um, Andrew's looking forward to the next um, one too he's we're we're probably gonna play whatever he plays <laughs> yep. card for card whatever andrew says we're just gonna play it he's top eight at every single nrg event so far um, three for three teams, for team swish he is mr nrg yeah he is um no question so. um andrew's gonna be actually be on the show next week we're gonna be talking trials and we'll be talking about a little bit more about it at the end of the show yep um i'm looking forward to having him on because like i said he's been such a huge part of this on podcast getting up off the ground yeah very helpful so, I definitely want to get him on, have a nice conversation. We're going to talk some ninjas. Um, I consider him Affinity Tribal, oh, of course. in my opinion. And he played and that he forever. Was the, he was the Affinity guide of uh, especially West Michigan, yeah. maybe of the state. That, James might argue it, but James wasn't good. Um, <laughs> but no, um, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to him. But we're going to um, transition to talk about a little bit about what we're talking about today. Yep. Um, today, what are you doing today, Stephen? Well, we're bringing on a, a pretty close friend of mine. Um, John Whetstone is is going to be the guest today, and it's going to be really fun having him on. We're going to talk about 
various aggressive strategies because that's what uh, John has excelled with on uh, <clears throat> the SCG tour and um, you know in, in other events. Um, but he's a very very good uh, red burn player. In fact, uh, mono white aggro. Funny story. Actually, the 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 um the last classic that I top aided, we joked and said that I top aided with Whetstone White because it was just literally a deck that John made. Uh, I messaged him Saturday night. was like, hey, could I play a deck for the classic? He's like, yeah, go ahead. I've got this pile of cards. I was like, sure, I'll play that. Um, the deck, you know, we'll we'll talk more about it, I'm sure, when he's yeah. on. It's a funny story, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I know I'm briefly, um, <clears throat> you know, I teamed with him in an RT made of Jane Johnson on week. We teamed at like the last team tournament. No, one of the last teams. Yeah, not it the gets, very last one. It gets cloudy. Um, what was anyways, before COVID? Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, it was um, one of the recent ones uh, before it was in Richmond, I believe. That sounds was. right, or Baltimore or something. No, it was it wasn't Baltimore. Okay. I've never been to. That's fair. Because me and you were actually going to go to Baltimore. That's right. That's go. right. That's um, right. But no, it was in Richmond, and we teamed. Um, we did quite well. Um, unfortunately, our standard deck, um, the deck card selection wasn't perfect it was a yeah. week one standard of course yep but john was on infect and he did what he what he always did he did well um i watched him like school a lot of people we'll talk a little bit about um some infect maybe if we get a little time but today we're talking aggro particularly the mono white and mono red style aggro yep. decks between burn mono white creatures all that kind of stuff yep and without further ado uh let's and we're gonna go ahead and bring john yeah, on let's bring him on let's do this right. <clears throat> how's it going john How's it going, guys? Pretty good, you know, man. We were just talking about um, a team tournament a little bit that me, you, and James was on. I wanted the world to know um, that uh, I taught you how to play Infect. Um, yeah, get help. I needed a lot of help with that one. He yep. did. Um, I did watch. A, I'm, I don't want to get too much into the story, but I remember like one opponent when he played Tarmogoyf post board against him. It was quite funny. Um, mm. it didn't have much of an answer for it, too. It was, it was very entertaining. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, but, about the Tron opponent? You said what? About the Tron opponent? Because I brought it in against a ton of people. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but I remember their face or expression. I couldn't stop laughing just because it looked so funny to me. Like, <laughs> so Because they were just, it was like kind of like that deer in the headlights kind of look like. Uh, of all the cards you would expect to infect to play against you, yep. you go, boy. Yep. Let's go. Yeah, it was definitely my Tron opponent because he like. Had two different walking ballistas and a dismember for my infect dudes, and I just played a like five six tremor boy. He's like, "What do I do?" <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. No, that's the cool thing about those decks, and I'm just being able to have a good little um, what is that familiarity with the de with the aggro decks where you can actually be able to play some cool stuff on the sideboard. Yeah, so, and that comes with just playing your deck, you no, know, especially with modern. Yeah, absolutely. Like that. But yeah, today we're gonna be talking aggro, like we've mentioned. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about John. Let's go ahead and forget the aggro decks. Let's talk about Mr. Aggro for a second. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've done in Magic, John. For those um, that don't know, of course. I traveled like 50,000 miles uh, for Opens the past couple of years. I have a handful of top eights. Uh, I won a classic with Burn. You know, just little things. I remember you won the, during Hogak Summer with the Burn for the Classic, because I, I was there at that event, I remember that, because I was playing Burn at the same time, and I was rooting for anybody that wasn't playing Hogak, I was playing Goblin Guide instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that weekend was great for Burn, I went 17-1-1. One one. That's nice, Yeah, that's I, really nice. I thought um, Burn was really good against Hogak, personally, I, yeah. that, I, I cast a lot of events that summer because I was playing Burn. Makes sense, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's awesome. Um, what brought you to Magic in general? Um, actually my current roommate taught me how to play one night, and then my best friend picked it up, and him and I had to keep one-upping each other, uh, until we got good. That's nice. It's usually what friends do, you know? Yeah. I yeah. was like that when I first came back to Magic and stuff. I was, came back to never play on competitive tournaments, um, worked out well, but... But yeah, just like one up and your friends could be like, oh, I could do something better. And then I started playing tier decks and, and, and they never caught back up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, best friend still way better than me. He just hates traveling. So. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. It's nice that you can actually admit it. A lot of people lie and be like, oh, I'm the best one. Um, you know, I'm good friends with Ray and I know damn well I'm nowhere near where he is. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 
So we spent like half learning how to bridge shuffle when we weren't hanging out, just so we could try to be better at bridge shuffling than the other one. That's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> Yeah, I remember learn, teaching myself how to bridge shuffle to try because I was the only one in my play group that played poker and didn't know how to bridge shuffle. That's fair. And I looked like a noob. Yeah. And you can't you can't look like a noob. You got to have some, some reps. Um, yeah, but bridge shuffling. You should see when I bridge shuffle my magic decks. People. <laughs> that's I, funny. I love doing it. They be like, are those foil tarns? I was like, they were. That's really funny. Really, really funny. Um, when you got in the, you said you got into Magic because of your friends. Um, what got you to start like grinding on the SCG tour over like go, grinding like, I know some people like the back in the day would grind for like the point the points to get like gold, silver, and all that kind of stuff to be on like the PT and things like that. What what gave you the idea that the SCG tour is a better fit for you? I liked how it was ran. I, at the top point, I'd been to like six GPs or something, and they all were run poorly. Yeah. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the GP Detroit, where rounds had like a 45 minute overhang every time. Mm. I, was, I was like, never again, no more GPs. Um, well, it depends. Like, I've been to Detroit a few times, and they've, they've sucked pretty bad every time I've been. Because um, we're here in Michigan, obviously, so we go. Was that the. The um, modern one when it was Eldrazi or no? Yeah, it was the Eldrazi winter. Oh, okay, man. Yeah, that was a long term. Yeah, we didn't get out till probably like eleven o'clock. It was wild. Yeah, that was insane. I, I was yeah. I I didn't do well in the main event of that one, so I was like doing side events and stuff. So it was like less noticeable for me. Okay. But it was still yeah. I, I briefly remember that. Yeah, I did well in it. I just got crushed at the end by Kiki. That's fair. Yeah. But what were you saying, John? I lost my win at day two that one, so I might just be a little bitter. <laughs> yeah, it's it's possible that happens, you know. I've done that where I'm, I get a little bitter, like, oh, I don't like these events, even though I had nothing to do with the event. But no, the problem that GP's had for, like, the longest time, which I actually, I could pull up on Facebook um, posts that I had <sighs> back in the day, where I said I'd rather do the SCG tour, primarily because GP's were ran... Each one was ran by, like, a different TO. Not like how now it's all Channel Fireball or whatever. But they would be, like, pastimes. And, God, pastimes we had some bad... Yeah, events. let's say a few of them were rough. The ones that I thought were the absolute worst... And, that, actually, they ran Detroit... That Detroit was a PES. Oh, PES. Yeah, yeah, PES was the worst. I've been to multiples of theirs, and they've all... Suck booty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to be one about it later. Yeah. And that was my biggest issue. The, like, the consistency. You would get, like, one organizer. Like, I thought when Channel Fireball and SCG both ran the GPs, those events were cool. Yeah. I enjoyed those ones. And then the rest of them, you just expected to have a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that was my biggest issue with them. And I could see why you gravitated towards the SCG tour. And, you know, it's a good time. Um, I'm also, I've enjoyed it because I'm a very big anti-buy person, like, mm -hmm. where I don't like buys. Um, I think buys in Magic is stupid. I don't think you should get buys. I know SCG still has buys, um, but at least they're harder to obtain. Yeah, they're less. Anybody can get them. Yeah, they're uh, less I guess anybody too. technically can get them, but it's way harder in SCG than yeah. it is, yeah. like, for I when mean, they were doing buys for Grand Prix. Like... I feel like if you get buys, shouldn't they mean something? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, they don't no, give they don't give everybody buys just for showing up yeah. at the um, NFL season, right, right? And things like that. Right. Like I feel like if you just played enough Magic, you could get buys. Like it's not that hard, right. For Grand Prix, where SCG, that's very accurate. Actually, you feel you feel like you earned something with those buys, yeah. even though you guys have buys. <laughs> And. Yeah, the only season where I ever felt like I really like deserved my buys and earned them was uh, when I queued for my first PT. And at that point, I had like three. Like you got three uh, back at that time. Oh um, yeah, it was a very brief period where like a lot of people could get three. Um, but um, yeah, no, every other time I had two. I just always had two because I was playing Magic, not because of how successful I was or anything. So I totally understand what you're saying for sure. Right. Um, so, John, when you got onto the CD Tour and you started doing well, um, what was the primary deck that you would play? Uh, I was playing Burn a lot there at the beginning of my grinding. Okay. Um, I, is, um, sorry, go ahead. I lucked into getting successful with it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, let's do this every weekend. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah, no, um... 
Yeah, uh, burn, burn's just good. You know, I love burn. Like, I've played a lot of burn. I've got made a lot of like small revenue off of like Magic Online because grinding burn on there is awesome. Yep. Because your leagues are so fast. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, I love you can make a lot of tickets there. very quickly with oh, burn yeah. when it's well positioned for yep. sure. I did it during Hogak summer. I was yep. playing probably burn every single night, probably like three to four leagues a night. Like I said, I went to what was the GP the the first one. There were, I forget where the first GP was, but I ended up um, doing well in it yeah. with Burn. I cashed it, and I started to like day twoing every GP like easily in opens and stuff with Burn. And then I, I cashed the GP, used that money from the cash, and I t- bought a plane ticket last second to go to Vegas and easily cash. Funny thing about that tournament in Vegas. 15 rounds of Hogak Summer and played Hogak zero times. Wow. And my deck was ready for him, too. Wow. I was so that's disappointed. That's nuts, man. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's, I, all, that's the thing about Modern, though. It's just how it goes sometimes. It's my favorite Modern's format. so diverse. What's um, your favorite format, John? Huh? What's your favorite format if you had to pick one? Currently, right now, it's Popper. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool, man. Do you play Burn there, too? Um, I own it. I do not play it in that format. I play I, Grixis Control. Oh, Grixis Control. That's that sounds cool. fun. I haven't played much Popper in a while. I used to grind Popper online with um Burning Goblins because the deck were super cheap and they shared a lot of cards like the Lightning Bolts and whatnot. Yeah, you know super that's common. awesome. It's super cheap. Yeah, that's cool, man. <clears throat> For sure. Um, so. Yeah, what um what kind of so you you talked about kind of locking into it, but what what initially um because I I played burn when I started out too, and largely the reason I played burn at first was just like how cheap it was. Um, what were some reasons that you gravitated towards burn like right away as your like first like go to deck? So I've been I've been to some opens. I qualified for my first Invitational. Mm-hmm. That was my second weekend and i bombed out yep and i owned like every deck in the format at the time okay but the, the only one i hated playing was burn okay so i just like you know what i'm gonna play it because i'm already miserable <laughs> then ended up the way rounds 14 and 15 if i won either of those i would have top eight it that weekend oh wow okay and I'm like, okay well maybe i just get this deck yeah okay and so then I just played it for a while, nonstop, and just actually learned it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that so, makes makes yeah, a lot of sense, yeah. That's how I was, actually, when I I refused to play it because, you know, the there's, like, a stigma attached to it, which we'll get into, like, about, like, being the burn player, you know, all that kind of... At least the stuff I would hear, like, oh, yep. most players that gravitate towards burn don't Very have common. skill. Very common, um, You yep. know, so my ego is like, no... I don't even, I'm playing Blue Red Phoenix. Yep. I'm playing these decks, which yep. they're not in my zone, I would say. So I would do very poorly and get myself mentally frustrated long term. And I picked Burn up because I was like, you know, I'm just going to play this. I have it. Similar to his. or I bought, No, I borrowed it when I first picked it back up. And I instantly day two cash. And I was like, oh. I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. People just do that with a lot of decks. You'll uh, one one that I think I noticed it more than any other deck I've ever played is when I played eight rack. Um, it is so funny playing eight rack <laughs> against people and beating them, dude. When they because no one no one actually thinks that's a real deck like ever. And and there there are specific times where it's actually like really really good. Uh, I played it in the meta where. Uh, spirits and humans were doing really, really well. Oh. And so it was excellent because those decks are terrible against smallpox and just like all sorts of removal and edicts, and then they just die to the rack effects. They run out of resources so quickly. Yeah. Um, and But, yeah, you know, it, it's it's so funny how, how players will often um, do that with, with decks. And to be fair... You know, I get where the stigma comes from because a lot of times new players or players who have their pet decks or whatever will play Burn or decks like 8-Rack and won't play it particularly well. But when those decks are played really, really well, they can be oh, yeah. really nice. And Burn Man has so many lines that people oh, yeah. can give it appreciation for, which we're going to get into. We're going to be talking way more about Burn. But let's talk about... let We mentioned, uh, at least I think you mentioned earlier or whatever... Um. 
about Mono White. I yeah. Know, um, so Whetstone, why don't you um, why don't you kind of tell tell the audience the story here because you're you're the special guest today. Uh, tell the audience uh, about Whetstone White. Which one? <laughs> uh, I love the, how he is. The, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the, cla- the classic um, version that I played. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so it was, was it, this was Pioneer, right? <laughs> yeah, Correct. it was Pioneer, yeah. So I had this brew that was a bunch of Savannah Lions that happened to have the human tagline, which is important for later. Yep, yep. Um, it was basically the mono white shell I've been playing in standard up until it rotated. I yep. just owned the deck in foil, so I put a Pioneer version together. Somehow convinced Dykeman to play it, and then he... I watched him just destroy this person and just watch the soul leave that person, like that, that person's body. And then I realized he was playing his wind in the top eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, it was awesome. <laughs> After the event, someone informed me that all his tenants should have been in the place of the Vanalish uh, Marshal. Yeah. Because everything was human. <laughs> Which both of us just kind of forgot were legal in the format. Yeah, that's I, didn't, funny. I didn't have any idea Lieutenant was legal in the format. I completely forgot. <laughs> um, yeah. Man, I've been playing around with this deck for so long. Yep. No one's told me, hey, yep. in your human strategy, don't follow you with it. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even come up once. Not even in the top so, 10. <laughs> so funny, man. Um, yeah, no, that, the, oh, the, the nice. story is so good. Even the. I think my my favorite part of the story is when I was uh, we were riding to the event center and the event starts in like fifteen minutes, and I text you and I'm like, dude, I, I what what's the cyborg look like? And you just message me and go, you'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm just oh yeah, like, <laughs> rack or something. Yeah. You'll figure it out. I have fifteen cards, but it's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. You'll figure it out. Was the exact quote, I believe. Yeah, no, very, very funny. It's, for um, sure. it's really funny that you actually topped eight with it, too. Yeah, no, it's definitely one of, definitely, like, recently probably my favorite in-person story, for sure. Yeah. It's a really funny tournament. So let's talk a little bit about, like, uh, Mono White Aggro in general. Yeah. I know we're mentioning some nice stories around it, because it can do well. Like, Mono White has, over the years, have done well. Yeah. Um, the big thing is, what's, like, the benefits of playing it, like, what are some of the key cards that like would drive you? Be like, I like this card. Is there like a specific one drop, for example, that you can say you're a big fan of? Yeah. Oh. Have your card Savannah Lion. That's a two-two. <laughs> yeah. If I if I'm uh, correct, I believe it is right. It's just like Isamaru. Yeah. yeah. That's where the term like calling these cards Savannah Lions comes from. Okay. Yeah. If you didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's probably my favorite card in the deck. It's just like let's just with a 2-1. Yep. Um, it makes yeah. it real simple. Yeah, a lot of the mono white aggro decks, like two ones for one. Like, I remember um, the humans deck in standard um, back before um, all this wild, like, un- ungodly powerful stuff came out. A really good, like, one drop expedition envoy, or whatever it was called for. Yeah, uh, yeah, just, you know, a two one, one mana, two one. one. Yeah. Vanilla. It, it did what you needed to do. Yeah, you know, you look back at decks like. Um, and honestly, this deck was kind of similar to the Pioneer deck I was playing. The um, the deck that Tom Ross had a really, really high success rate with back... Uh, I forget what the other decks were in that this standard. This is after his Infect runs? <sighs> yeah, no, yeah, no, it was still... It was before he left to do the Wizards thing. Oh, okay. So wait, it's pretty far back. Um, Wasn't it but it was the it was the always watching humans deck that played yeah. like always watching Raven Inspector, the um, town gossip monger, yeah, things oh, yeah. like the that. Humans deck, yeah, just the straight up humans with all always watching. I love that card by the and way. And that was in this Pioneer deck, and yeah, the card is so oh, good, man. I saw your list because I remember seeing the list, and I was like, man, I want to know what he played against, man. Yeah, no. I, well, the funny thing is, I played you know I played against like at the time pretty real decks. It's just. You know the deck actually uh, the deck lines up really well it with like, like a big... good catch you off guard deck. Oh, too. definitely. And Giant Killer is so good in yeah. in formats where and at that time the format was a lot more fair, quote unquote. Big... There was a lot it of questing big... beasting going on and things like that. Go ahead, Whetstone. I said it was big red the format. Yep. Oh Just yeah. To chop down their glory bringer, and then you had a bunch of three twos because always watching. Yep. 
Oh, that makes sense because, yeah, that was when um, Todd Anderson had that big red deck doing well. Yep. Okay, yep, I remember that now. Exactly. Um, Pioneer has changed so drastically yep. in the last one year. It's been around that. It's hard to remember what time period. I feel like I'm talking about moderns like history at this point. Yeah, no, Pioneer and um, Historic and, yeah, all the formats are just insane right now. Just, yeah. It's ridiculously powerful. Um, no, yeah. Let's talk about how the popper format is not ridiculously powerful. <laughs> Which true. is why you love it, I assume, right? Didn't they just ban yeah. the couple cards from there? They did. Oh, yeah, Mystic yeah. Sanctuary. And then what was the other one? Yeah, go ahead, Whetstone. You probably know more about it than us. They ban uh, Mystic Sanctuary and Expedition Map. Okay. Expedition Map. That seems good because that Tron deck seemed pretty good. Um, yeah, Tron deck still seems fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I, th I think it probably is definitely fine. That's a card they should ban in Modern. <laughs> Tron stuff, that's what you want to go after? Right <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of buddies that are on Tron, so they give me a lot of crap because, you know, I'm a very big dredge yeah. player, and then when looting got banned, all that kind of stuff, you know, it's yeah. whatever. But off of Tron and yeah. back to back to the yeah. mono white stuff. So, yeah, like John was saying, uh, Savannah Lion, um, obviously, this just Expedition Envoy. The, the great thing about the white deck is, especially when it wins die rolls, the fact that it just goes... Two power creature on one, double two power creature on two, and then usually on turn three, you have some sort of anthem effect, be it Venerated Loxon, be it Thalia's <clears throat> Lieutenant, be it Always Watching, be it Banalish Marshal. Um, these are like traditionally uh, the things that the white decks want to do. They want to be quick out of the gate, they want to put multiple bodies into play, and then they want to anthem and just get your opponent dead, usually by turn four. Sometimes turn five, but usually it's a turn turn four. They're dead if they're not interacting, um, and I think that's generally what the mono the mono white aggro decks are trying to do. Yeah, um, void, void and anger the gods. Yep. You know, yeah. Six. Try not to die to that card. Yep. Or play cards like you know a Danto Vanguard, uh, Thalia, things that interrupt their ability to cast these cards or can survive through them. Yep. Yo, speaking of that Donna Vanguard, let's talk about that new three one. Yep, seasoned Hollow Blade. I remember when you texted that to me, I was like, I don't know, man. I'm not about it. And then I watched it, the recent PT. Yep. Wow, was that card good. Yep. Oh, uh, we were, we were yeah. learning that week one how annoying that card In really Limited, is. it was one of the best on well, that We knew mm -hmm. that was going to happen. Yeah, you, you do. I mean, but it's just that effect is just great because the white deck doesn't really care about its cards after turn four. Every card, or, you know, like a Danto, you can pay life. Your you your cards, you're totally willing to just throw away random one-drops to keep attacking with this 3-1 that's already established in play. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just traditionally something that the white decks really like, is is a threat that is um, able to... It's, it's a, um, not evasive, but it's resilient. Um, and it's, it's, you know, powerful. It's a two mana three one, like that's going to kill people in a pretty, pretty good amount of time. And it's very hard to interact with. You can't block it profitably. Um, it's just a really solid And it can turn effect. into a real, um, legit blocker yeah, too. Yeah, no, it can be a great a blocker, blocker that, too. that won't die. In addition, it doesn't have the little I, claws I like the Vanguard I played had. a mirror match one, uh, multiple weeks ago when yeah. I was trying to test the early variants of it, um... And yeah, no, it's really it was really annoying in the mirror because it kind of just created like a I can't really attack profitably on the ground into yep. this. Mm. Um, and then if I do make like a big attack, you get to hit me harder on the backswing and kill me. So yeah, no, definitely, definitely really important that it can attack uh, and block well. I know on um, one big thing about like the mono white aggro decks, which I was always a big fan mm. of. Like I, I joke about it a lot. But um, I played a lot of humans back when, um, like, Eldritch Moon and all that. And I did enjoy me some Thraven Inspector, just like the next guy. Oh, yeah, cards you know, insanely good. Um, I like a card that lets me draw a card later right. in the game, which was which was huge. Um, and which is cool, John was, um, we were talking a little bit earlier. Um, John, tell us a little bit about Thraven Boy. What, oh, about how he's, like, my favorite card in the world? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, same here. Like, yeah, I definitely know. one of my favorite. Yeah, uh, I could sum fit him and Goblin Guide into the same deck, uh, my life would be perfect. Uh, <laughs> that would be an sweet. awesome deck. That's hilarious. I am super excited to see Thraven Inspector coming back in uh, Double Masters. Yeah, my Slugger was yeah. and so stick. 
Very cool. I'm gonna forego all the sweet, you know, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Dark Confidants stuff going on in that format and just draft every Draven Inspector I see. Yep. And I bet you'll win a lot because people won't be ready for it. And it's just good. It's just, the Raven Inspector is definitely one of the best one mana white creatures of all time, which is a pretty huge list because of what yeah. we're just, you know, that's kind of what white all does. It plays little, one all mana. times a little on stretch, but you know, it's a, it's a fine card though. Like I like it more in like the human, like white aggro strategies myself, not in like modern humans. Cause that's a whole different, like, ball yeah, yeah, it's a different, but, um, yeah. no, cause like I said, I played during like the Eldritch Moon and all that. And I enjoyed it because it's a 1-2 that draws me a card. And later it ends up being like a 3-4, four, 4-5 four, because you start linking all these sizes of tenants and always watching. And next thing you know, that's a legit threat that's closing in the gap on lethal. Oh, yeah. Like, very easily. which Really really awesome. good blocker, too, because of the second toughness on it, which is yeah, no. you know super relevant as well. Um, I don't know how if we did have to deal with it. Like in Pioneer or something like that, in a voice chain whirler killing it. You know, yep. there's there's cards that just avoids. So yep. it's, it's it's really nice. It's Blazing very, Volley, things like that that people do play. It's just a very, very good card. And like I said, even if they kill it, you get, you have this little token that lets you yeah. like add a card to your hand. Yeah. Sure, you got to spend some man on it, but that's a fine trade-off. What, what's my favorite thing about Thraven Inspector 2 is the fact that it is good in pretty much any archetype. Other than maybe control, but even control decks like could play Thraven Inspector. It's just you only have so much room in a control deck, yeah. so you probably wouldn't. But it is so good at being both an aggressive card and a like mid range grindy card. It can now, do both. It was in Blue White Flash for the longest time. Exactly. Cruise Copter. Yeah. John, were you about to say something? I, I heard you like coming in a little bit. Steven was talking about how it was given like every archetype. I don't know if I've ever seen him in Merfolk. I don't think Dragon Inspector knows how to swim very well. That's fair. Yeah. Old blue eye fish. Yeah. By arc, I'm sorry, by, uh, <laughs> I meant uh, not specifically archetypes, but mid range, yeah. control, aggro. I also have not um, seen him in, in many dredge lists. Oh, yeah. But he does make a clue. <laughs> so that actually could be good in dredge. It's a very slow dredge deck. <laughs> but damn it, yeah. we have the plan. You could yeah. uh, sacrifice. He makes to that salvinger thing titan or whatever it is oh yeah yep. yeah seems good i know another benefit of mono white which i've always actually enjoyed when i've touched that like i don't play it quite often but when i did um it has some really good on um, like removal and and like lockdown spells like conclave which is a standard card people obviously know about you know convoke four three and a white you just pretty much do the banishing light kind of thing but with any it's any permit right yep yeah um, a card that I'm a big fan of, I loved it when it was in Standard, again, with that Humans list during Eldritch Moon and all that, and it's in Pioneer in some lists, is um, Decoration and Stone. Card's I awesome. love that card. Yeah, no, that that was in my deck. Oh, yeah. I wish there were more of it. Uh, that card is insane. I've always loved that card. Yeah. Like, it's never good and really good enough for Modern, but man, that card, I've always been a fan. Like The, the thing is, the white deck is so aggressive that they don't have time to get the value off the clues, yeah. and it's also just incredible against tokens, um, which is another huge upside to the card. But really, the reason it's so good is it's just a clean answer to anything, any creature, um, and then it they, they just don't usually have the time to actually pop the clues and not die. Yeah, because we're, <clears throat> oh, we, as the white deck, you're putting so much pressure yeah. on them. Yeah. And that, that's nice. And the fact that you can exile a bunch of tokens like against Storm and things like that, um, if you ever run in that, it's pretty cool because yeah. it, they don't actually get the clues from it in mm -hmm. addition. Because I've done it because I've played very vaguely it in Modern, but I've enjoyed it every time. Not saying mm -hmm. it was ever good, but... So, John, what, what initially got you into brewing, like, white aggro decks and playing yeah, white aggressive cards? Especially, Speed, you, you said you're typically, like, a burn player and doing yeah. those kind of things. Um, I had to... I've been looking at a, the standard white decks there for a bit. Sure. And I was like, I don't know. Then I bought that Gates deck in foil. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think it was Dallas was the first week where that gate deck broke out, and so did the blue white aggro deck. Uh huh. And you know, I'd already bought the gate deck in foil, but then I'm sitting there with like buyer's remorse, being like, I could have foil history of Anolias. Yep. <laughs> and 
Someone told me that if I cared enough about winning the event, I'd put it on my credit card. Oh, so I decided to be responsible for once in my life and not put it on my credit card. That's good. I just wasted sixty dollars in the main event because I got beat up all day by that white deck. Yep. So I was going around to everyone I vaguely knew doing the classic SCG grinder thing, trying to bum them on a white deck off someone. Yep. I found one, ended up losing my win in the top eight, the classic the next day, and went home and ordered it all in foil. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that That's is, fine. for those that don't know, you mentioned a good point, the good old SCG grinder or just magic player like thing you do nowadays is you do pour in the main event you instantly go on social media <clears throat> yep find a new deck mm-hmm. oftentimes a deck that beat you in the tournament the day of yeah um, um we had that in richmond for sure looking for um trailer crumbs because it was yeah. impossible to find them yeah i believe um, that no that that's actually a good thing um by the way you actually did the irresponsible thing you always put it on the credit card <laughs> all the time don't matter what it is just do it god You'll always make that biggest mistake. <laughs> Could have won the event and then paid off the credit card. That's where I messed up. Exactly. You got to look at the purse that's attached to this tournament and be like, I could play this Gates deck. It's all foil. I probably won't make anything off it. Or I could put all this on this credit card and I could potentially win the 5K yeah. or whatever it is that first place gets. Yeah. That's just good That's just good money management right there. Yeah. You know what the problem was with the Gates deck that weekend? Huh. I was 74 or 75 foil. I couldn't find a foil as a guild gate. Ugh. Why would you play something that's not complete? Unacceptable. But it wasn't the same. I believe that it was not the same. (laughs) No, but um, what are some of the negatives to playing mono white compared to like a typical like red aggro deck, which would the most commonly um, colored base aggro, of course. So the mono white deck doesn't have the reach with like the spells. So when your opponent eventually sweeps the board, as a lot of te- decks tend to do, you just really can't recover. It's not like you can like draw Wizards Lightnings and just burn your opponent from there. Right. Uh, but see, people view that as negative. I view it as a positive that like, okay, well, I can go get food now. Like, I did the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You know, I've actually had that mindset. That's why I've always enjoyed playing like Burn and stuff. Yeah. When everybody else is sitting there like, I haven't ate all day, I'm like, I've ate six uh, I've times. E- yeah, I've eaten whenever I've wanted. I've had 30 <laughs> minutes every round. Uh, like yeah. the team tournament we were on, I played mono black aggro, he played infect, James played burn, mono red in standard. We had plenty of time. Yeah. We got to enjoy ourselves. There's a lot to be said about just like conserving mental energy and playing very fast, aggressive decks. I, yeah. I, um... I, I, the aggressive decks are nice when they're good. They're a lot of a lot of fun to play, and yeah, having having extra mental energy to expend is a big deal. And um, I, I I think that um, you know more more people should consider that in deck selection sometimes because I don't I can't remember like any tournament where I've played, especially tournaments. Um, like, I've done well in tournaments with mid-range decks, control decks, aggro decks, and the the ones that I, like, feel it the most in are definitely, like, the control and mid-range decks. So yeah, I'm playing well, aggro. I'm I don't, never registering control again Yeah, in my I don't know that I never will, oh, but I, 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 I can, can tell you it. I have a headache. Like, I don't I, feel as good. Yeah, go ahead, John. I think the last time I registered a control deck in a large event, it was blue-red control. Mm-hmm. Uh, in like our devastation yep. era, Ooh, Dynamo Hulks. Tower and all yeah. that. Oh yep. yeah, Glimmer. Yep, that was, and, was uh, fun. It was a good deck. I, I drove like fourteen hours to Roanoke. Didn't sleep. Oh, lost my like. I went two two in the modern then. Oh. And we're getting ready for standard. And I'm like, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm not yeah. doing this. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's actually funny. <clears throat> um, I played Burn in Columbus like a year ago or whatever oh, it was. Yeah. And then me and Ray Perez, um, we we sat there. He was like, "Hey, I gotta work." Oh god! And I'm yeah, like, you told me this story. And I'm like, "Oh, that's fine." I was like, "We'll just leave when you got out of work." He's like, "I get out at one." And I'm like, "All right." I was like, "Hey, why don't we drive down at one a.m. and then we'll hang out at the Hollywood Casino until the tournament starts?" And I'm like, "I'm playing Burn. I forgot what he's playing. I think he was on um, Urza." Okay. Um, 
And I was like, all right, Ben, so we went. I started out 5-0, and then I ran in the spirits multiple times, and everybody was playing Unso Mariner, and my searing blazes looked like a joke, and I was so frustrated and tired because literally went, played poker, went to the convention center, played Magic, started out 5-0, lost the next three, and I was like, I'm out, went to sleep. I, feel, I fell asleep. We ordered food, and I was asleep when they came to the door. Like, That's so funny. And, even when you're on an aggro deck, if you have no sleep, you're going to have a hard time. Yeah, I would never advise playing any any competitive like game. I wouldn't advise playing checkers on no sleep, <laughs> let alone playing magic on no sleep. I've done a lot sleep. of tournaments on no sleep, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> That's, yeah. But yeah, no. Even the next time we're in a car with James, while he's driving like 90 in the middle of a snowstorm, yep, you're classic. Playing checkers. All right, I'm in. I'm in. When when we get out of, of COVID, COVID world... I'm definitely down yeah. to play some well, checkers. Get, the first I open would, is going to be in Columbus. <laughs> We're playing checkers. Calling in. You're giving back my keys. <laughs> I don't have them, buddy, but, uh, you know. Steven has my car keys. He probably does. I definitely don't. I do uh, think why don't you tell the, yeah. the viewers a little bit about that story, John, because that was a great one. Yeah. So, I didn't have a ride to Philadelphia in the middle of the winter um, last year, or this year, I don't know, time runs. Yeah, whatever. Um, it was a Philadelphia event. Yeah. I, I uh, got off work after working 12, 13 hours, drove straight up to Michigan, got in a car, went to Philadelphia, um, did not do well, but then I also realized I lost my car keys somewhere. Yeah. So my car's in Michigan, and I'm from Indiana, so I, let, I think it was Steven and James convinced me to play the classic, even though I was broke in order to get my mind off it. And then I realized, well, if I cash this, my top 16 this, I can sell the boxes and buy a new car key when I get back. So I played this terribly built mono red deck that had four uh, claim the first born in the sideboard. Mm-hmm. Got, got paired in a lot of mirrors where those claim the first borns were really good. Mm-hmm. And top 16 and had to buy a new car key uh, and get, what's the right word? It's the, the guy who came to, Put the give me a new car key. He was an older man who was getting on to me for being in flip flop shorts in the middle of Michigan in the winter. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's normal uh, attire. Stephen Stephen and James has my car key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but too far. They're too far in on the two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. They're still in it. Yeah, but no, like what you were what you were saying, John, about uh, the weaknesses to mono white. It, they're definitely the white aggro decks, especially in game ones. If you play against decks with sweepers in them, you're you're in a, a rough world. Especially if you lose die rolls and 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 such. Uh, the white deck is really really bad at recovering from sweepers, which is why cards like. You know, in historic and modern, Thalia Guardian of Thraven are so important. In um, standard right now, you have cards like Fight as One, um, Unbreakable Formation, things to kind of counter uh, those those uh, spells. Uh, in one of the standards, we had Valorous Stance. That was a really good one. Oh, yeah, and the nice thing about Valorous Rhinos. Stance, too, is it was modal. It was also really good at killing things. Siege Rhino, specifically in that format. But yeah, no, the, the white deck, uh, specifically, is much weaker to uh, removal spells and sweepers than the red deck normally is, largely due to like you were saying, the red deck has has reach with burn spells and things like that. Um, Do you remember that white deck that went hit, like that played uh, History of Anolia yes. and Rock Reinforcements? Yes. Yep. Well, that, that was a deck. nice deck. That was yep. a nice deck. I can't tell you how many times people would sweep my board and be like, Savannah Line, Savannah Line, Heroic Reinforcements. Yep. And that was definitely a special case. Um, you know, we don't get that in every format, but yeah, heroic enforcement is an awesome card. Yeah, heroic no, that was a sweet card. Yeah. I really enjoyed that card. I didn't enjoy playing against it because I was, <laughs> it was always really annoying. Um, that, there's multiple times I was playing like the mono blue style decks, or I was playing like Phoenix, and both uh, mono white was a whole tough matchup on both ends. Um, as a Phoenix player, like that matchup was tough. Yeah. Um, very tough. Yeah. Your hope was like to just land like, crackling Drake to try to absorb so then they conclave you and. You know, reinforcements or whatever in the same yeah, turn yeah. and you just sitting there looking dumb so like, brutal man yeah so brutal um so john um why would you say overall it's a a good call to play white as your base color for aggro 
it's just so much stronger, like, in the early turns than the red decks feel. Mm -hmm. And if, like, if the re if your deck's all reach and none of the earlier pressure, like, it's not going to do anything, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's part of the problem I feel with the current red decks. Yep. Are the creatures aren't good enough yep. by any means. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. The red... The one drops are very bad. Yes, they right are. Now. Squirt Spitter's fine. He's acceptable. Um... And Fervent Champion's, like, fine, too. I mean, Standard is just so messed up that, like, cards that would normally be really passable just don't look as good. Yeah, that's true. Um, like, Steamkin feels too slow, which is insane. Like, that card was super, <laughs> super, like, yeah, busted at one just, point. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, Standard's crazy right now. Like, I remember when I played an aggro deck where Stromkirk Noble was just money. Like, this was just a great one drop. Card's a and, joke now. Oh, yeah, card's embarrassing. It doesn't have haste. It, yeah, so it's, for those that don't know, it's a one mana, uh, one red, uh, one one, Cannot be blocked by humans, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. You know so, what that gets around? <laughs> Thraven Inspector. Thraven Inspector. It does. <laughs> Stromkirk Noble was nice. It was uh, in one of the first decks I uh, really started doing well with in Magic was a red-black aggro deck in that format with, like, Hellrider and um fall it was a it was mono red splash black for exactly falcon wrath aristocrat and nothing else and i splashed black off four cavern of souls dragon skull summits and blood crypts i think it was like two cavern yeah. uh we did have doomblade in that format which did not kill yeah. falcon wrath aristocrat <laughs> <laughs> to be fair nothing killed falcon wrath aristocrat except tragic slip so Ooh, it was quite good was nice. yeah it was it was a very good i card. love morbid Yep. Like, oh, kill your creature. Be like, oh, hello, do you That know? was a really good format. I loved that format. Yeah, but... no, um, I didn't play in that format, but from what I've heard, it, it was very it fun. Nice. It was very fun. Well, let's transition. We're talking yeah. about some red decks now. Yep. Um, let's talk about, like, the red decks when you typically think of mono red aggro. Um, you have, like, the traditional, like, aggro decks that standard sees. Yep. Um, then you got, like, as we mentioned, like, straight up burn, which is popular in modern, a little bit in legacy. Some semi. We saw Sandy, Sandy Dog just did well with it in Historic for two yep. the the open or whatever. So it's yep. starting to kind of show up in Historic too. And then um, another one that can be considered, which I think is like borderline between um, aggro and and um, combo, is um, Prowess. Yeah. Um, I put it right there in the middle for both because it's kind of like it a is a mix. Of both. It is a mix. Um, I would agree. But let's talk about some like like the, the key differences between what Burn and Aggro like does. Primarily, John, give us a little bit of an idea of what the difference between like a typical mono red aggro and then what burn would actually be doing. Uh, I mean, the aggro decks are just like actually using a bunch of creatures to try to close the game with a little bit of reach to either remove blockers or when they've been gotten sweeped, then to close the game. Mm -hmm. Or burn, your stereotypical like your stereotypical like lava spike, you go mm -hmm. just riffle, like it's just majority burn with very few creatures yep in a lot of ways i've i've heard from from some players and i've always kind of felt this way too burn is honestly like a little bit like a, a combo deck in the sense that you're just using your cards to just count to 20 and do that in the best way possible and, and in the quickest way possible um would you agree with that john <clears throat> Yeah, for sure. It's just like the games where you can't do that are the hard games, yep. and those are oh, yeah. super hard. Yep, definitely. It can be mentally frustrating because you gotta do. Like I say, you don't get burned credit, but man, there's a lot of games like, especially when Barisco came back, I had to deal with that crap. Yeah, like, burn. That was pretty annoying. The thing that a lot of people don't um, really think about too with burn is it. It's very good. Burn can be a control deck. Oh, um, yeah. And it's actually very good at being a control deck, like you know, against like um, against like decks like humans, for example, or spirits. Like you oftentimes need to kind of function as a bit of a control deck and use your spells less uh, going to the face and more killing creatures and disrupting your opponent from doing what they need to do. Yep. I've always been a big fan of like Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Grim, love that card. Grim is That's always like, a very always has solid a soft spot to me because I. I have a thing when I play Burn. One deck I don't like to lose to is Humans. Yep. Um, and I tell myself, I'm going to have a better tournament if the one deck I don't lose to is Humans. Yep. 
So I play a lot of Grim Lava Mancers in my yeah. sideboard. No, for sure. Grim Lava Man, um, Searing Blood is a really nice one on the board for when they meddling mage named Searing Blaze and then you blood the meddling mage. By that always way, feels excellent. I think Searing Blood is a sucky card. I always will say that. That's I fair. hate that card. I've played it. Like, yeah. don't get wrong. Yeah. I've, I've played it because sometimes it's correct. Sometimes it's good. I mean, there are um, time. There are very specific formats where it's excellent. When yeah. when there's a ton of humans and a ton of spirits and like when Affinity was still a deck. Um, yeah. But but yeah, no, I I totally get what you're saying. The downside of if they're able to sack their creature, or do some nonsense like that, getting no damage is really crappy. Not just that, like if their guys are just growing too yep, quick. Yep. Yep. It only does two damage, yeah, which, which is definitely lower than three by yeah, a oh, lot. Well, it's a yeah. big deal. The one point you, you know, wouldn't think is the biggest deal, but it oftentimes, the fact that it doesn't kill Manus Rider, very big deal. Um, so yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I agree that the card is um, good in spots, yeah. like I said. Yeah. But not not my um, cup of tea. I'm a big fan of Searing Blaze, though. I love me some Searing yeah, Blaze. Yeah, Blaze is just amazing. Um, and I notice a lot thing. of burn players that, like, inexperienced burn players, I will say, like, too willy nilly with their lands, man. Yeah, yeah. Willy nilly, they're like, I need to thin the deck. All right, then you're gonna draw a one, uh, yeah, one damage spell, and you're gonna be yep. looking silly. Yep. One of the keys to playing burn for sure is recognizing when it's time to thin and when it is not time to thin. Exactly. Um, there are definitely times where it is time to thin because the deck is literally just all percentages and trying to up your percentage to hit burn and kill your opponent. Yeah, in the best especially way possible. when your opponent's at three or less. Yeah, it's all math. The deck is just a lot of math and trying to do these very these very minute decisions that slightly up your chances of, of, of hitting burn spells. Um, but yes, when, when you have no lands in hand and a blaze is lethal off the top, you're do doing yourself a disservice by killing all the blazes at, for lethal in your deck um for that like you know 0.5 percent or whatever you gain you give up like four percent or whatever because you're killing all your blazes yeah um, fetch is good for what'd you say john it's what the upkeep fetch is good for. exactly yes and i've done that many times um but yeah i think a lot oh, yeah. of people upkeep probably fetch, yeah that's hard to um, yeah. some people especially if you knew you don't think about like the timestamps on when to do things. Yep, the upkeep fetch though. Yes, very classic um, burn. I was um, showing some guy, uh, like not really showing, but what, testing some burn with some buddies as I was um, buying the deck or whatnot. And I tell him I was like, all right, if you're in a paper tournament, your opponent's at three. Preferably to do this at F and M where where it's the best moment. But you go to your opponent, they're at three. You go your hell back. You draw a card. Look at your opponent. It'd be like, what are you at? Yeah. <laughs> and then, then pass the turn because you do nothing. Yeah. Like, best thing to do. Oh, God. Oh. That, that makes people so mad. Yeah. <laughs> best thing to do. <laughs> I, I do it because everybody knows I like to enjoy myself when I'm yeah. playing. I just like to have a good time. Um, but no, I, I love burn. Um, if I'm doing the monitor, I would, I would like look towards playing like a burn style charity. Yeah. Because see, burn's always sweet. Like, yeah, even when fine. it's not in a good position, I enjoy it. It's still it. solid. Yeah. It's always solid. It always just does its thing. Like, Burn is very, very consistent. It does pretty much the same thing every game. And, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's always a, a viable strategy. I don't think it's ever, you know, a bad deck. Um, yep. I think it's always definitely there. Yeah, I th Burn, and there's, like, there's a few different ways. Have you um, messed around with it, John, since Incinerator came out? I heard people talking about it, but I didn't know if it made any actual um, relevant moves in the format. I see you did not pay attention to the no ban list event of, I played with Founders and Federators. Oh, I, we saw that list. How did oh, it go? I, I looked at it zero times. There was a, uh, like I was on, I was on stream, I was on coverage one of the rounds. I lost the die roll to humans. Yep. And game one, if I was on the play, I would had turn two incinerator. Because you game, had Riftbolt? Yeah, game, yep. but then they just, like, my like mage named Riftbolt. Game two, I had the turn two incinerator. Game three, they same thing. They played a Belling Mage into my Riffle, where I would have had turn three Incinerator. Wow. Okay. Interesting. It's sick. Yeah, I just wish we had like another Riffle. Yeah. Fire, but what? Yep. Or whatever. The Red Seal. Is it Sealed Fire? Yep. Sealed Fire. Yep. So that card terrible on its own. Yeah. No, it is. Two damage is not enough. Yeah. That. But if, there you yeah, go. Just like another. Yeah. Um, so how does Incinerator word? It says if you do um, 
How much damage do you have to do to an opponent? For every damage you deal, it costs one less mana, and it's five generic, one red. It costs one less generic mana for every okay, damage so you Okay, so if you do that in Seal of Fire, it would... Correct. It would still be a one mana play, so Seal of Fire is still maybe considerable if you were just all in on the four incinerators. But like John's saying, it's probably so bad on its own that it might not be worth it. Um, but Rift Bolt is, you know, solid Already on its own. Already in the deck, yeah, so. yeah. Um, yeah. The greatest part to me is... Um, I've never been a fan of this. I play against like burn players. I told you I did this a few times when we're doing leagues. Is um people playing Rift Bolt and um light up the stage. Like I can't get myself to do that, man. Like they just do not go well together. Um I've never been a fan of those two in the same deck. Um Oh yeah, you can't suspend no, off a light up. You cannot. Can yeah. If you could suspend that would be really but not like, yeah. but no, you, yeah, light up the stage in Modern Burn just feels like way too slow to me, but I, it could be wrong. Like I, I like it better in prowess style strategies. Yeah, it makes which um that's actually the next sense. thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, um, is what what would you consider? Uh, do you consider prowess um, aggro or combo? Like you were talking, I mean, I would call it uh, more aggro than combo. But you were talking about earlier how it's kind of like a little bit of a mix. Yeah, and it definitely is. Um, you know, it's a deck that's using Manamorphose, um, it's doing busted things with free spells, like Manamorphose, yeah. and Gut Shot, um, and things like that. But yeah, I would, I would probably, I, I would say it's definitely an aggro deck, but I agree that it, it hinges there with, with, um, some combo aspects. But what would you say about the archetype, John? What would you call it? Count as combo, kind of like Infects count as combo. And That's I think fair. It's the same deck as choosing different spells. Yep, it is. Yeah, it basically is the same deck, honestly. Yeah. yeah. The only one gets to go to 10, the other gets to go to 20. Yeah, but it's kind of like. But the, is it really like that with Kiln Fiend? Yeah, yeah. Kiln, Kiln Fiend's basically an Infect creature. Yeah. <laughs> there is an honor. Because you'd be like, all right, gut shot, gut shot, or Manamorphos, boom, boom, be like, you're dead. Yeah. I've died plenty of times with that card oh. because they just literally oh, yeah. play like three spells and you're like, oh. Morphos, Morphos, Battle Rage. Well, they don't usually Kill. play Battle Rage. Like, there have been some lists. There has some been some, like, there's so many lists out these yeah. days that yeah. anybody could be playing anything. Yeah. But. My, my buddy Don that I've told you about multiple times uh, during Eldrazi Winter was like convinced that Kiln Fiend Aggro was like the thing. And he was doing that. He was battle raging it. And like, you know, on turn three, he'd go like Morphos, Mutagenic Growth, Battle Rage. <laughs> Freaking attack you for so much damage. It was absurd. <laughs> the deck was not good. His but it was had to be so funny clean, as heck, man. Yeah. Oh, buddy. No, that that's actually pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> you know that before Prowess was like actually like a an actual deck when mm -hmm. it was still very strange. And my teammate who was on Modern was getting attacked by two Swiss Spears, and he's like, "Do I bolt one of these? Do I even care?" I'm like, "Nah, dude, let's just take it." We died that turn. We just died on turn two. Uh huh. It's had a ton of Mutagengros and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, "What happened?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, free spells, bro, with prowess creatures is something else. He's like, hey, we could take it one swing. No, you couldn't. No, you could <laughs> no, not. You could not. Um, what do you think is most appreciated right now for like people when they're registering their decks and they're thinking about like, what am I going to play? Because right now we're all online for the most part. There's yeah. some stores around the country that are in paper, but most of the tournaments that you're going to play right now are whether it's Magic Online, Arena, certainly whatever. like high level competitive. Exactly. Ones. Um, I don't like those three where you have mono red aggro, like the creature builds, burn, or um, prowess. What do you think is the most appreciated where people would actually be like, hey, I'm going to register this this week? What do you think people would be leaning towards more? Or, better question, what would you all be, what would we all be leaning towards if we were going to register a deck and had to pick between those three for some reason? Mm hmm. And had to pick between those three. Ooh. Um, I would probably not touch the prowess deck because I do not like that deck at all. Okay. What about not, not even the new blue red one? Uh, I have. I'll be honest. I haven't really played against that one yet. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I've, I've been touching modern much. Give me one second. Uh, got blue four. Okay. Well, the first click I just clicked on didn't actually have blue in it. Stormwing Entity. Yeah, Stormwing is, Entity is the huge is one. Is the idea. Um, yeah. Stormwing. 
Because you know with gut shots and stuff, playing yeah. a Stormwing on turn two is just yeah. very strong. The 3-3 three, three flying prowess for two mana, basically. If you've cast another spell, it's two mana. Yeah. So the idea is you morphose it in or gut shot it yeah. in or, you know, maybe mutagenic growth on a swift spear or something and then put yeah. it in. It's pretty much like mono red prowess, <laughs> but instead of killing fiends as your two drops, they're just playing like those instead. Yeah. Oh, oh and by the way, just so everybody can know, not to cut you off, if you're playing mono red prowess, I've played a lot of prowess and done well with Stop playing kill, kill, uh, not Killing Fiend, but um, Steamkin. Steam that card sucks. <laughs> Dalloway said that same thing at, at one of the <laughs> tournaments that he played. God, that, he card that card sucks. Yeah. But carry on. Carry on. <laughs> um, so you win Touch Prowess. I correct my statement. I'm a huge fan of that card, so I'd probably play that deck just because I'm a huge fan of that card at the moment. Uh, which one? The, the Stormwing thing. It hasn't given me enough room to be disappointed in it yet. That's no, fair. Um, we played in Legacy, so you would be. But it was not build, good in that Legacy. Build, that build was trash, though. It, it was not great. No, it was, yeah. But, um, no, that card is definitely sweet. Like, I think it's going to be really sweet. I played against that um deck in Modern on a League. Um, I was playing my Grixis Turbo Dread, so I killed them on turn three. But that's fine. Um, But, no, I think that card is really good, though. Is it as powerful as Killing Fiend? Probably not, because Killing Fiend just... Go, but that does have flying in prowess, so that... Yeah. Um, what was that? Storm and you Chaser? can play both. Storm Chaser Mage was huge at one point, yeah. so... And nothing says you can't play both. You can just play both in your deck. Yeah. Like, they actually both play pretty... They both really, really encourage you to play a lot of nonsense, cheap spells and things like that, so they actually play kind of well together, honestly. Yep, that's true. Um, is there anything, like, special you would do with a burn list, John, if you were to register one right now? Uh, honestly, I'd probably register more Searing Blood, but other than that, keep it for stock. Just copy paste stock list, change the sideboard three cards, maybe. Yep. Add it to Searing Bloods. Pretty standard burn decisions. And Here's a good one. I don't have any awesome Shard Volley techs, like, uh, tech at the moment. That's fair. Here's a fun thing that's going to go in line with my next question I had for you. Um, has there ever been any cards that you've played where it was just to be funny or it just like upset your opponent so much because it was just so out of nowhere? Uh, for with that burn. Purpose, no. But when I played Shard Volley, I had a lot of people who got upset with me. Even after I top eight Minneapolis with four in my deck, that's where it was. To, me to, to tell me how my deck, my list was horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I Man, never understand like, how one, people do that. One of the, like, it's so crazy. One of the funniest things that I ever had happen when I was playing Burn initially pretty early in my modern days, Raphael Levy used to be a huge um, advocate for guerrilla tactics in the sideboard. And for those who don't know, it's basically like a, a Burn spell Loxodon Smiter or Wiltleaf Liege. So against Jund, if they plus the Liliana, you would discard it and they would just take four, or you would kill the Liliana. But usually yeah. you just four their face. Yeah. But Jund players would get so pissed when um, they play Liliana plus it and take four. <laughs> you're, you're talking about Jund. Let me tell you about the tech I used to. So I was playing and I was doing a lot online. Uh -huh. Well, there was um, a PTQ over at um, Pandemonium Games out in the Detroit area. Yeah. Um. So I was testing. I. I hate playing Burn Mirrors with Core um, Firewalker. I hate doing that because... The you know, shocks like, can really add up if they have the like, answer. Like, That's one thing I've always noticed. For Core Firewalker? What? Yeah. What, the fact that you have to shock yourself a lot to put it in, you have to like, yeah. be very aggressive. Yeah, and then if they have the path, you took yeah. such an insane amount of damage... That it was really not worth yeah. it. So I was tired of that. I, mean. I don't ever like Eidolon in the mirror. It's just my personal preference. I've never enjoyed it in the mirror. So I'm sitting there. I was like, I like Eidolon, but I hate taking the damage. So myself decided, instead of the four core Firewalkers in my sideboard, to beat the mirror, and it was randomly good against John, Deathshell, and things like that, I was playing four Leyline of Combustions. Mm -hmm. So I'm up against John. I take game one pretty easily. Game two, he... He says, there, I, I look at my opening seven, and I had double ley line, one land in hand, and so, some random spells. I forget what they are. Probably creatures. I, I look at, creatures. I look at my hand. I look over, and I'm like, I'll keep pregame effects. Put that down. He looks at this card for multiple minutes. 
And then he goes, turn one then, thought season. Then he goes, he went like Inquisition. It wasn't yeah. thought season. Take six. And then I was like, take four. It's only four. Oh, is it two it, each? Yeah, two okay, each. Okay, I thought it was three each. Like, no, take okay. two each. Called the judge sitting there. And he was not because I just like killed him with those purely. I was like, he could, he just couldn't do anything. None of his spells. He couldn't remove my spells. He couldn't so, do anything that whole game. That's hilarious. Like, I enjoyed that card a lot because in the mirrors, like online, they would go and I'd be like, keep. They like a bushing. I'm like, <laughs> like, was it good? Probably not. Yeah, it's but, awkward in the mirror because like at, at the point where you put the ley lines down, they just go, oh, whatever. All my spells are going upstairs now and they might just outrace you because you had ley line. Um, it they, really depends. They still take shocks if they target you too. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Yep, Keep yep, that yep. in mind. It's whenever you are permanent control. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good then. Yeah. Field of Ruin. Take two. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, like I said, I don't know if it was necessarily good, but it was like my fun little tech. Oh, it's funny. And Oh, it, it's definitely it got a funny. lot of people, actually. Yeah. I ain't gonna yeah. lie to you. Yeah. Um, but no, though, like, Burn is just such a cool deck to me. Like, it's a deck that I would actually, like, play in the future if I want to do well because I know the deck. And that's the thing. Don't be afraid to play these decks. Yeah. Like, just because, like, I know decks like Burn, Dredge, Tron, all these decks. Fish is another one. Um, they have this stigma to not play or, you know. Let's I'm not about that, Ink Rack. I'm not that kind of player. Yeah, you're doing yourself a massive disservice yes. to not try that. I'll play any deck. Like, I joke about, like, If you I play it and don't Tron. enjoy it, cool. You don't have to play it anymore. But you should at least try it. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you know that you're not that kind of player, it doesn't appeal to you, sure, don't play it. I know some people are that way with certain decks, which is fine. We all have our play style and things we we enjoy more than others, um, but yeah, just dismissing decks is is an incredibly foolish thing to do, you know, and um, people do it way too often. I, I agree. So, and and John, I know um, <laughs> we talked about both red and white. But I asked you what the benefits of playing white over red. What's the what's the lateral? What's the benefits of playing red over white? Is it just the reach, or is there other things in addition to that? Just the reach, because your creatures are all just about similar mm -hmm. um but besides the whites are more powerful in the early um yeah i think it's just reach yeah and it's it, it, right reach right that was my favorite card when it was standard legal coming back to historic which pretty one? soon hazaret oh yeah hazaret which we'll be talking about that in a momentarily um, I know one thing about red that I've enjoyed over white is, as you were mentioning, if you're in a meta that's heavily playing a bunch of, like, four-man arrest, things like that, and you want an aggro deck that could fight through them way easier, and that would honestly be... No, there's argument that that might not be true with all the, like, protection spells and things we have now in a yeah. mono white. Yeah, yeah. But in, in um, history moments, like, like that humans and stuff like that, where rats were usually, like... Game Ender, I know I beat the Mono White Humans, like Tom Ross's list, a lot when I was playing Mono Red Eldrazi, because I would just survive until I played six mana Chandra. Yep, and, and then you sweep the board, yeah, and good luck. And then it'd pretty <laughs> yeah. much be like GG. Yeah, it's, GG. Game. Yeah, it's um, game over for sure. But yeah, no, that's definitely true. I know um, Standard Mono Red, which we briefly touched, just, and there's been so many um, corporations of it, you know, the current builds are playing more like the, was the one drops like Fervent Champion, Scored splitters, <laughs> excuse me, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then you got your nice little two drop packages with robber, which I do love me some robber at rich. I ain't gonna lie. Card's I, I awesome. Think that card, that is, card is incredible. Um, I love robber. It's the rich. a sickeningly good um, card. It's crazy how um standard has the power level of standard made it where experimental frenzy is not even really that good anymore. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah. But Too let's, slow. But let's talk about Embercleave. Talk about a magic card, man. Like, yeah, it's um, permanent Teamer Battle Rage. I am about sick <laughs> and tired of dying we, to that card. We talked about Teamer Battle Rage. It's just a Teamer Battle Rage that just is always there, and you get to keep using. So it's so stupid, man. Card, man. But you know, it just falls right into that pile of cards that got printed. You know, the past half year, year, like just. The power level on some of these cards is just, it's comical. It's just ridiculous how good they are. Um, um, what would you guys think um, was the best, like, mono red aggro deck that you've experienced in standard? What do you think, John? Uh, uh, mine was definitely the Hazard deck. Yeah, I think that'd be um, my vote, too. Which one is uh, my question? Because you had the black red and the pure red. Two. Okay, I, yeah, like, I played the one that splashed, like, the, it splashed four Dragon Skull Summit. For Scrap Heap? For your two scrap heap scrap. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. 
So that was mono red. I mean, yeah. that was just mono red. Yeah, um, abusing scrap. Because then the, the pure black red one was playing the things like um, what's the artifact? Heart of Kir- Kiran. A couple Heart of Kirans um, usually. Pia. Yep, Pia's were in the deck. It was kind of bigger. It played like the Russes and things like that. Interaction spells. Yeah. Um, they sometimes and Argyle's would... Bloodfast in the board a lot of times yep. was really yep. cool. Yep, another card that was really good. Especially in mirror matches, things like that. Yeah, that card was so good in that format. My yeah. God. Just format, I only played that deck once, and I was at Invitational, where I audibled like three times before I gave my credit card to someone and said, don't spend more than this, but I need this deck. And then within a round, they gave it to me. And the deck was busted. I 6 2 with it after never touching it. Yeah. Yep. I actually played it for the first time. I was in on um, GP Pittsburgh. I played mono black control and I went four four two two in the main event. Um I had some draws with the black red aggro deck. I beat the mono red easily each time. Um by just drew because it, we it was just a grind fest. Yeah. Um so I ended up um a buddy of mine, this is I just quit my um job in a factory like a week before and I ended up going last second. Uh there's a PTQ. PTQs are back doing these at events now. And my guy was like, guy I was with, was like, hey, I got the mono red aggro deck and the whole cyborg guide. You want to play this? And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. I easily four old, um, lost my winning in for top eight because I played against a mono life gain deck. That their only goal um, was to, was to win to red. <laughs> yeah, was to beat red. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so. That was oh man. That was about the story. Of so that. they top aided with mono white life gain. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was unfortunate, but uh, that's the life that, we're living. And that's a, you know that that brings me to something that we didn't bring up. That's another huge benefit to playing mono white is generally mono white is favored against mono red in almost every format, just because your cards usually line up really really well. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know why. Like for example, in the format with history of Benalia. It was so hard for Red to keep up with cards like History of Benalia because it was automatically a two-for-one. And um, post-board, Chain Whirler wasn't even that amazing, and it wasn't good anyway if they were able to lock it on before you could Chain Whirler them, mm-hmm. which happened a lot if you if you lost the die roll. It was a very real thing that could happen. Yeah. Um, but traditionally, the, the white decks, because of life gain effects and you know, uh, some other random, uh, just like really, really solid, like really solid removal spells. White usually has, for example, we talked about cards like always watching earlier. Red can't deal with enchantments. Yep. Pure red just cannot deal with enchantments ever usually. Yeah. And always watching is just unreal in, in an aggro mirror. Um, because you get to be aggressive and defensive and your stuff, uh, gets out of burn range and, and various things like that. So usually that's that's something I really like about the white aggro decks is usually they're they're fairly well positioned against the red aggro decks. I agree. Um, I, I do want to talk about more than uh, more about like hazard aggro decks yeah. and stuff, but I know John does have to work in the morning and I want to be respectful of his time. So I just want to finish up talking to him a little bit as um, what's the future hold for you magic wise, John? Any plans? Uh, I'm gonna play a little bit online. And do some cool, like, you know, some tournaments here and there. But I mean, they stepping back until things can go back to paper. Yeah. I, uh, I find it hard to commit time that I could be, like, working or doing stuff on my house. Like, instead of sitting at a computer. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just focus on that stuff at the moment. But as soon as paper's back, I'm going to be back, I think. Oh, yeah. Cool. I think that for, I was still seeing when I expected it would be... Um, be a big uh, it's gonna be a big event the first um, tournament back in paper for sure um i'm excited for it obviously it's not any time in the near future no but in due time we will be back to playing paper we'll be back to traveling the roads like we once were um but yeah was there anything else you want to talk about john i know it was uh, it was awesome uh, no we have to cut short with you um this because you do have to be up early for work and you know we don't want to take away from that for sure uh, no, thank you guys for having me. Not uh, a problem. Was... Sorry, what was that? That was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah these... it was fun having you, man. Yeah, it's awesome. We'll, we'll have to do an event in the future. 
Um, I know um, I mentioned, I talked to you about doing a mono white video. Um, we were thinking about doing like the mono white tokens from from Modern or something like that. Or if you come up with any uh, Modern brew that you yeah, want to play. Honestly, if you want to play something, dude, just ship it to us yeah, and we'll, we'll do a video. Preferably mo uh, Modern or Pioneer because we have mana traders and yeah. we don't have to get any cards off of Arena. But we can do anything on Moto. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can do any format. So what, whatever you want to do. Just let us know. Yeah, we should do um, a video in the next few days when you don't, when um your work schedule is a little lighter. Yep. Um, so we um, can. Steven. Yeah. And remember when I played that mono white deck at that Grand Prix? Like, yes. Man, that's high. Yes, yes, that yes. Sweet. We, we, I have an updated version. Let's play that one. All right, sounds good. Yeah, just send, get us a list or yep. whatever. Just, just tell us what it is when yeah. we make the video. Yeah, well, that way right. we can go ahead. We'll and then we'll get some videos made with that because it was fun talking with you, and we'd we'll like to do it again for sure. Yeah, no problem. Before I leave, um, I'm going to dip, but this is a good time for Steven to talk about his love, Dairy Queen, and about how you guys are going to try your best right here to get sponsored by Dairy Queen. Have a good night, guys. No, oh, right, man. Dairy well, Queen. We'll that would be later, something. Man. All right, see you, man. No, John, that was a nice time. I really enjoyed talking to John. Like I said, I teamed with him, um, and I would definitely team with him again. Um, he got a little disheartened when he um, had a very unfortunate loss. He got turned three by Amelie both games. Yeah, that's Obviously, I was telling him it wasn't a big deal because, you know. Yeah, that's life. Loss, I mean, that happens. Losses happen. Yeah. Um, I had to learn that the hard way, so it's yeah. it's kind of like um need to, you know. Yeah. When I was testing Amulet, I did, what you preach I did, thing, I did the same thing to Infect on Moto. Like, I knew it was a super bad matchup, but I just had nut draws twice and i was like oh well i guess i guess when i draw the nuts i can still That's what I tell people don't use that term buy like because uh, yeah. james was uh, doing it again that day we're like oh that's a buy for you like no, no it's not nothing's a buy <laughs> no it's nothing not. is a buy people yeah. they have um, removal post board first of all is one reason it's not a buy they also like they were playing arboreal grazer that card was annoying as heck because it blocked two of your three like infect creatures you know the only thing it doesn't block is blighted agent but blighted agent doesn't kill on turn two so it buys them that extra turn that sometimes they can just combo off and kill you before mm -hmm. you kill them type of deal because amulet can definitely win on turn three i believe it could even win on turn two sometimes um I with agree. really not straws um i do want to continue to talk a little bit about um the mono red decks a little bit um, yep. preferably um we were talking about the hazard um, upcoming in August, I believe, August, um, beginning of September, one of those two, um, Amakit's actually coming to um, yeah. Arena for the Historic formats. Yep. Um, uh, historic is wild right now, I get that, but we're going to ignore that for a second. Yeah. Let's not even think about how wild it is, or not hear about band speculation, anything like no, that. No, not right now. We are here to talk about when Amakit comes, how that actually impacts the mono red decks. Yeah. And um, Go ahead, tell us some of the cards, like... Well, so obviously you mentioned Hazaret. Um, do we get Soul Scar Mage in, um, in that yep, format? We get Soul Scar Mage. So Soul Scar Mage is huge. Shaker Kendra. Ken Kenra's great. Kenra is the that is the the two drop that is going to complement Robber of the Rich so well. Those are just going to be an excellent like you know one two punch for mm -hmm. your two drops. They're excellent. They both have haste. They both do some. They both are kind of card advantage in ways because if Kenra dies, you get it back later. And it keeps pounding them even more than it did the first time. Yeah. Robber gives you cards, things and like that. And your Kendra some text on there is very relevant. Yeah, yeah, they can't, yeah, can't be blocked. You can, yeah, you make something that can't be blocked. Yeah, no, super um, solid. Then mentioning of can't be blocked, we have, I don't know if it'll get played, but we have Oncrop Crasher. Yep. Um, Oncrop Crasher has a really, it's, you know, we're taught some of the best three drops standard has ever seen in chain whirler and ferocidon ferocidon did get banned in standard but it is uh, not banned it, in it is not banned in historic and chain whirler people talked about banning it in standard it was close i think the card was incredible yep. um so it has a really hard um cast to beat out but in some formats it, it might be better for sure um, just the, the fast attack you get the damage in right away with how combo oriented the format is i actually could see on crop being better than than the other two in, in some worlds for also sure. it could just be the pure um cyborg car where on crop some more um be as aggressive as yeah. possible main board yeah now now let's talk about at the very top end of things something that mono red has been looking for is a good solid five drop and glory that's bringer. glory bringer. yeah for sure um glory bringer is excellent uh 
Honestly, currently, I in this format, I wouldn't even play Glorybringer, to be honest. But we'll see how things change. Um, um, deck, I think that that could actually go back to like doing the black-red thing where it's playing more interaction. It could. Um, let's um, be real. Not I right mean, now. We no. So, like you said, we're not here to talk about bands, but let's be realistic. I would not be surprised at all if, by then, we're not talking about Wilderness Reclamation anymore. No, at, But if we are, at this Glorybringer's point, not very good. Listen... <laughs> I'm going to make it clear. I'm no longer predicting Reclamation being banned. I'm off the... Yeah, I, you I have can given never, up. You can, it's just like you can't predict Dig Through Time to get banned yeah. anymore. I, it always seems like it should, and it never does. Listen, so, Reclamation <laughs> is going to be in every format yeah, legally. Yeah, we're the playing. only way you can get banned is if they do a rotation. Like, at this point, <laughs> I, have given, I have given up. So, uh, yeah, yeah. If if that is still a prominent deck, I don't even want to think about playing Glorybringer. Can you imagine playing Glorybringer and getting Aether Gusted? <laughs> that's why. That's why um, the other, the five drops in Standard are like not playable. Like the the um, the Terror of the Peaks is only playable because you combo the the. Um, the stupid seven drop elemental card with it and that's not even a, a great deck anymore it was just a thing people were doing at first um and then the the um the hasty dragon and standard that has the um oh what's the keyword uh the one that spellbreaker has god why can't i think of the name of the keyword the one where it gets a counter or Blanking on the keyword. Anyway, you viewers, I'm sure you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, you talk about Stark and Hellkite? Yeah, Stark and Hellkite, and then, yeah, so, but that one's not been playable either. No. And, you know, it's a very solid card. Like, it's a five drop dragon that attacks right away if you need it to. But unfortunately, the format is just not even kind of in a place where that is a, a reasonable thing to be doing. Um, the reason Glorybringer was so amazing in that format is a, it was a very creature oriented format. Uh, some of the best decks, you know, were were um, Teamer Energy, uh, Zombies, um, things of that nature, um, or you know, black other other red based aggro decks, which Glorybringer killed things in those matchups, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I I actually do not think Glorybringer, if the format stays the way it is right now, I probably would not play Glorybringer in a red aggro deck right now. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, it would be maybe a good sideboard option, but it's just this format right now, man. It is, whew, it is powerful. We were testing some historic yesterday, and I think games ended on turn four, like seven games in a row. Yeah. And to be fair, we were playing a super non-interactive combo-oriented green deck uh, for some of those, which also contributed to the turn fouring. Um, but. You know, we played Team or Wreck and got killed on turn four, like three games in a row, and then started testing other stuff. Um, yeah, was, but on, on this topic of mono red, I do think we should maybe um, consider testing some mono red builds for the event this weekend. Honestly, I thought about, about that more. for the best of one. Yeah, no, we should. We're yeah. probably again, we're probably doing ourselves a disservice to not at least pick it up and, and try I'm not it. And to the point where I'll play anything. Um, yeah, we just want to do well. We're trying yeah. to do well. We're trying to find decks that do well. We've We've had pretty good success with Mono Blue. Yeah, Mono Blue. Um, it feels the best solid. Of one, it felt good. It's and, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a solid deck. Definitely might be what we play. Mm -hmm. And on the on the topic of Amonkhet, we get Slitherblade, which is actually a very interesting Mono Blue option because it's a one two unblockable instead of a one one unblockable. That's a one one, right? It's a one drop. I mean, right? yeah, it's a one drop one two oh. unblockable. So it's actually just like an upgrade to the Miscloak Tarot, which yep. is pretty cool. That is actually really good. Yeah, it, no that, one... that one extra toughness is just a oh, huge. Oh no, that's deal. really good. It doesn't, doesn't die to chain world. Yeah, yeah, that's the huge big part. big deal for um, sure. Yeah. Well, look forward. Um, I know historic should be good. Let's talk about the respect as an aggro player. We mentioned it many times through this podcast that playing burn and stuff doesn't get to you a lot of respect because you, you know, the the stigma attached to it. I just want, like me personally, I think that stigma is um unnecessary at this point in Magic. You know, if you're um if you're an all around player, you should know that you should play the thing that's going to give you the best opportunity to win. Yeah. Um, whether it being in your play style or it being just the best deck. Um, yep. And I've had to learn that the hard way is like because I took that stigma to heart. Yeah. Where I was like, I ain't gonna play this deck. I can. I was trying to convince myself. Like I said, I played Blue Red Phoenix for so long, even though it just wasn't fitting my style. Like I wasn't doing well with it, and I was forcing myself to play it because it was the best deck at the time, which it was. Um, hands down, the best deck at the time. 
Um, but sometimes the best deck ain't the best deck if you are not comfortable playing it, or right. you're, it's just not your style where you're going to play it optimally. Yeah. And so or, is it really the best? Or there are also times where the best deck isn't the best deck for that weekend because yes. uh, the specific best deck has not adapted to the deck that is well positioned to attack it that specific weekend, yep. which is a lot of the reason I think we saw the mono white deck uh, in standard recently do so well in that Red Bull event. The, the Reclamation players were not ready for it. They yeah. were not aware it was even a deck. And then it kind of came out of nowhere, had some success for a weekend. And then before the PT, everyone saw this deck. They adapted to it. They found cards that were really good against it. Um, and it did not do very well at the PT. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that's oftentimes how, like, established, quote-unquote, best decks work is they are incredibly good decks that can be attacked for maybe one one weekend you can kind of catch them napping type of deal um and then you know the the best decks in history are usually able to adapt and find other cards in the format that make them good against those specific strategies another example of this in standard is when we saw the green decks were having a lot of success with shifting mm -hmm. ceratops and questing beast and then reclamation players said huh we're going to put Gargaroth in our sideboard. Good luck with this, Mono Green. And we know darn well how ridiculous Gargaroth is yeah. in those green those green matchups. We were playing like three in Historic in, in our um, our uh, Abash builds. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where usually the quote-unquote best deck is just it's it's able to adapt really well and, and keep I finding agree. ways to win. But there are very specific weekends or tournaments where... You can you can catch them off guard, which yep, is it's important to recognize um, when those times are. And also to be able to have a deck that attacks the best deck, you also need to have plans for the secondary and third. Yeah, you have decks. to have a, because yeah, the, you know the way Magic usually works is, it, and especially like in modern, like we talked about, modern mm -hmm. is so incredibly diverse. Even during Hogak Hogak Summer, you didn't play it one time in a fifteen round event. Usually that doesn't happen in other formats, but it can. Um, but you know, yeah, you, you need good plans for the other decks in the format because the reality of it is even when there is a completely best deck, usually that deck only makes up 25 to, you know, at really extreme cases, like 40% of the metagame sometimes mm. if it's a really, really degenerate broken metagame, uh, kind of like an Oko standard. Yeah. I think we were close to those numbers there. Or yeah. when you go back to like Callblade standard, it was about that bad. Um, but yeah, there, there are always other decks. People are always going to be playing other things for various reasons. And, you know, it's more likely that you're going to play against the other stuff than the best deck. You're going to play against the other stuff more times than the best deck on average. So, you know, you need to have other plans as well. So it's really important to be able to attack from multiple angles. Yep, I agree. And like I said, um, don't worry about like having respect as the aggro player. You'll get that respect when you're doing well. Yeah, when you do well with the deck, like people will respect you no matter what you're playing if you're continually doing well. And people like to criticize PO, and that's their own like issues. I yeah, just whatever. you know, be the bigger player. Just do what's gonna give you the best chances of winning. If that's your goal, yeah. then don't worry about other people's opinions. Um, I know a future holds for us. We have like the tournaments coming up this weekend. Um, it's going to be very... Yeah, and very then after this weekend, next week, I am, like, pretty certain I'm finally going to sit down and play one of these SCG events because I've been talking about it for quite quite some time now. I've mentioned it multiple times on this podcast, too. But, yeah, no, next week, they probably going to be the week... You're lying. <laughs> I know you're lying. Next week is going to be the week where I finally sit down and probably and play one of those events. Um, I can because, well, do they do they have historic... For those events they do but the okay. main event standard so i have no interest yeah that's fair let me double check on while we're on here like yeah i don't want to give wrong information yeah for though. sure um yeah stand guy i forgot about that yeah i know standard is kind of i just don't know if i i really don't want to play standard yeah, so playing yeah you know i i i just don't enjoy playing reclamation very much i mm -hmm. you know it's a very skill intensive deck it's a it's a powerful deck it's you know the mirrors are are really, you know, they're good magic, but I don't enjoy that archetype very much. This is not what I like doing in magic. Um, oh, so all it's, the challenges are standard now? Oh, they're all standard, too. 
Okay. Well, I'm, okay, everyone. I might, I might have been a little little hasty there. We'll see. I might actually do... I was talking with Zach Allen today. Maybe we should consider doing some of these PTQs on Moto. Yeah, I think Like in Modern and stuff. I think we, that's what we need to do. Yeah, that seems um, a little more fun and enjoyable. He was he was really talking about uh, how sweet the format is right now. No, Modern so. was good. I was playing some Modern myself, and yeah. I've been having a really good time. Cool. Yeah, so. no, I... I do love what they're doing with the. Um, oh yeah, it's not there. I, I like. I love yeah. the SC, SCG. SCG's doing a great job. They always do a great job. Props to them. You know, as usual, the standard format right now is you know kind of meh, not not the most exciting thing in the world. But that's not their fault. They can't no. do much about it. Um, no. And they're they're trying to use Arena as their competitive platform, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, By the way. I think I might buy one of these Carnox chairs. One of these Carnox chairs. How comfortable are those? You play, you sat in them at the Envy. They're fine. I mean, they're they're nice. They're they're like what you're sitting in right now. They're not much different, honestly. Yeah. They're they're a good chair, though. I mean, it's yeah, maybe it's I'll a get solid one. chair. So so. Because it's always uh, always nice to be um, comfy when you're playing Magic, right? Yeah, absolutely. But no, um, next week we're gonna actually um. Have Andrew on. I'm not even gonna try to butcher his last yeah, name. Yeah, I was about to say, how do you say his last I, name, I don't know. <laughs> dude? Um, uh, we're gonna call him Mr. Energy. <laughs> yeah, um, Andrew W. Um, he has been killing with ninjas on uh, Legacy. Yep. I expect him to be probably playing it again. You know, I wouldn't be shocked. Yep. Probably um, teaching us how to play it because yeah. <laughs> playing is 75 almost guaranteed. Yeah. He's he's been money in the NRG events. Yeah, we can't argue he's, with he's him. He's having anymore. this kind of streak I had in the Lotus Box events, and you know sometimes things just are going really well for you, and you know that's awesome for him. And you know hopefully they keep going well, and hopefully uh, we can we can catch a little bit of the fire. Yep. Um, regardless, <laughs> of next week we're going to be talking tribals. That's going to be a little bit of everything. We're going to have a good discussion on the Ninja's deck to be more in-depth, to get some of his insight on it. Um, we're going to talk Affinity on uh, how he did so well over the years with it. Um, we'll briefly touch like Fish Sub. I would like to talk about Goblin since it's a very big deck in um, um, Legacy and Historic and a little steam in um, Modern because um, Zach Allen did well with his build of it. Yeah. Um, kudos yeah. to Zach on his um, good performance. Yeah, What did he get second? I don't know what he. What, okay. what the I know he. I think he said he was one round away from going to the PT. So I assume that means he finished second. But yeah, I, I have no idea. Uh, no, but yeah, either way, fine. props to him. Good job. Yeah, good, good job for sure. And maybe we'll talk about it a little bit tomorrow. We'll we'll get some lists that we can examine a little bit. But mainly, it's gonna be talking tribal and the things about being well at tribal decks on. Like knowing oh, humans will get mentioned as well because there's no way you can the talk classic tribals. one slivers. Yep. Slivers always needs to get mentioned in tribal conversations. Oh yeah, one of the most popular tribal yeah. co- decks of all time. Vampires from Standard recently. Yep. That's probably the most recent Standard a- a tribal deck, I think. Like um, real, actual competitive uh, meta tribal deck. I believe yeah. it was Vampires. I don't know, Jason Reed and them would have argued that Merfolk is the <laughs> In most Standard? Of, yeah. <laughs> oh buddy, that's so funny. Um but yeah, no, uh, Merfolk, obviously, Classic 1, Goblins, Elves. Yeah, no, it's going to it's gonna be a, a fun one for sure. And I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing Andrew's takes on things. Because yeah. clearly, you know, Ninjas is a, is a solid deck. And, and I just want to get Andrew on here because, you know, he's done such a huge Yeah, part. yeah, he does so much stuff he's, for us behind the scenes. He's the reason that we're on Spotify right now, yeah. that we're on the podcast, downloading services. We're right now in the waiting on the approval from Google, Apple, and them to get on their platforms, and that's all because of Andrew. Yeah, so um, yeah, he, obviously very thankful like, for what he's doing. Like, for yeah, us. we're out here trying to get it out, but without Andrew, we wouldn't even be able to get our word out even more. Yep. So we appreciate it for, on that part, and like I said, we're looking forward to talking to him. But we're gonna wrap this up, people, and be respectful of everyone's time. Yep. Um, we talked a lot of aggro today with John Whetstone. I would definitely give him a follow on Twitter because he's always a resourceful, entertaining guy. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, until next week, um, this has been Larry. Steven. Along with Steven, and we will catch you later.